on a mysterious granite hill in southern New Hampshire rests a series of stone structures. Who built them and why? Was it a stone calendar intended to mark the seasons for agriculture? Did it serve as a religious site for rituals long forgotten? When settlers first colonized the New World in the 17th century, they discovered that they were not the first. Well, I'm standing in the Patty area, and actually standing inside Patty's cellar hole. And uh, Seth Patty Sr. bought a piece of the silltop back in 1734. And 10 years later, he bought another piece of the property, which we think actually included the site. In 1802, Jonathan Patty inherits the property from his mother. A civic-minded man provided shelter to the town paupers. We think he actually was involved with the Underground Railway, helping the slaves escape from the South, going north to Canada. And it was illegal to help the slaves escape to freedom. In the 1930s, during the early excavation of the site, they found a manacle on the site. Uh, the wall behind me at one time stopped, right behind me. And if you look at it, you can see where the wall was sectioned in. And on this side, it's faced in very, very nicely. So if a federal agent came in here and he had heard rumors that patties were abolitionists, he could come into the cellar, look around, and all he would see is a solid wall. In the summer of 1936, William Goodwin arrives on the site. Credited with being the savior of this important site, Goodwin buys it in April of 1937. William Goodwin was the first person to start archaeological research at this site. He hired a crew to clean the structures of debris and brush, and after that they began restoration of some of the chambers and walls. After he died in 1950, uh, the archaeology again picked up, and that's the time my dad first heard of the site. In 1957, Robert Stone, an electronics engineer by trade, acquires the site and in 1958 opens it to the public. The place was called the Stone Ruins of New Hampshire, and the next year we changed the name to Mystery Hill Caves. When Bob Stone got involved, I believe in the 1950s, and started purchasing the land here, I don't think he had an appreciation of how large the site was. Four thousand years ago, strangers arrived at America's Stonehenge an unknown group of people skilled in astronomy and megalithic stoneworking technology. There are many architectural features on this site as well as others located throughout New England that resemble ancient megalithic sites of Western Europe, including this chamber we call the uh, V-Hut, which resembles some of the wedge tombs of ancient Ireland. Megalithic construction in archaeology involves one or several roughly quarried stone slabs of great size. It is usually associated with prehistoric sites, the important thing is that the stone itself is consistent with many of the other larger stones that we see in this area. So it comes out of that era of stone quarrying where they're quarrying very large blocks out of the local bedrock, really from right within this area. Uh, we're looking at the top edge of the quarried stone and the first feature that sort of strikes one's eye are these points and scallops and points and scallops that go along the edge of this, a sort of serration in the stonework. This is indicated, this indicates that they were working this with a stone hammer. Every time you see these indentations is where they were working with a stone hammer on the edge of this stone, which they did all the way up to the top. Gary Hume, who was the state archaeologist at the time, looked at it and said it was unmistakable what we were looking at was a stone that had been shaped with lithic technology. Uh, this is a, a stone that's probably been quarried off the bedrock. It's got a cut base and it sits in a, a little uh, trough in the back with uh, gravel as its base and then behind it there's a stone wall. The other thing that's interesting about this stone is that it's been sculpted in such a way that these are all worked edges along here. This shoulder and everything has been shaped. And then this midriff here actually creates uh, an axis to the weight of the stone as it's sitting in the contour to the hill so that it's remarkably stable. Uh, even though it's just a standing stone standing up all by itself, it's, it's solid as a rock. The amount of work involved to 
quarry the stone, transport the stone, lift it up and put it into place, as you can tell on some of these structures. Uh, that amount of work was not something that a colonial farmer would have been involved in. Well, archaeoastronomy is, uh, is looking at archaeological structures, as you see about you here at America's Stonehenge. And many of the structures that are here, for example, this, uh, this large wall that's right here beside me, uh, to my left, your right, as you look at it, is a north-south wall. And it's, uh, it's not a coincidence that it's a north-south wall. That's the connection between uh, archaeology, archaeology and astronomy. It's linking the two sciences together. The precession, uh, as the Earth wobble on its axis, as the Earth actually revolves about the Sun, it's not unlike a top. If you spin a top, you know that as it begins to slow down, it starts to wobble. And the Earth is doing that same thing. It's the Earth's north-south axis that's beginning to wobble. What that means is that the North Pole of the Earth points at different stars over that 26,000 year cycle. One of the, the uh, astronomically significant sunrises is the uh, summer solstice sunrise. That's when the sun rises as far north as it's going to rise during the whole course of, of the year. So the changing of the Earth's tilt actually helps us state the site basically because the Earth uh, has shifted on its axis over the last several thousand years. So if you look out at our alignments, our solar alignments, um, they actually don't line up perfectly with the site or with the sun anymore. Uh, for instance, the summer solstice sunrise alignment behind me the sun actually rises uh, just to the right of the stone now, whereas 4,000 years ago it would have been straight on. We also date the site using, uh, basically just looking at the construction of the site for one. Um, the site was mainly used uh, stone on stone construction. We use uh, shovel test pits and we also use carbon-14 dating where we're looking at organic material that was left on the site. Carbon-14 is the rarest carbon isotope which occurs naturally. Nitrogen-14 atoms in the atmosphere are hit by the sun and changed into carbon-14. Plants absorb the carbon-14 and animals then eat the plants. Once a living thing dies, carbon-14 begins to decay at a predictable rate. Dating involves measuring the rate of decay in the carbon-14 isotope and comparing it to the number of steady-state carbon-12 atoms. Everything which was once alive can be measured this way. That uh, radiocarbon dating came out about 4,000 years uh, ago also. So that would check with the astronomical alignments being slightly off as well due to the Earth's precession. So you've got two means of determining approximately the site of the construction, uh, the, the date of the construction of this particular site. So not only do we know that the site is ancient, um, I also made a discovery on Google Earth a few years ago uh, so I was using, they have this uh, line feature uh, where you can draw a line from one point to the other. Um, and I was using that to kind of draw, extend the lines out in the alignments um, because I knew that uh, there was a few other alignments further out, uh, a few marker stones further out, and I wanted to see if those lined up with uh, the ones that we already knew about. And uh, one in particular I was looking at was uh, the summer solstice sunrise alignment. So I started extending that line out and I ended up um, basically extending that all the way out across the Atlantic Ocean. And I noticed that I passed right through southern England. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. So I know Stonehenge is basically right along that line somewhere. And I started zooming in further. And all of a sudden I realized that that thing actually goes right through uh, the trilithon, or one of the trilithons, right down the middle of Stonehenge. What is the answer to the mysteries on a hill at America's Stonehenge? A walk down the clearly marked nature trail will begin your journey into New England's ancient history. <laughs>